My name is Andrew and this is Rogue Wrenching. Well, actually, this is a variable displacement compressor out of a 2014 Chevy 5.3. This compressor failed with 94,000 miles on it. So we have evacuated the compressor so there shouldn't be any Freon left. We're gonna wear gloves just because we don't want anything getting in contact with our skin while we're working on this. This was a catastrophic failure. So this compressor was working, making some noise, and then it went to not working at all. So when this compressor was not working, the front clutch was locked in. So the compressor was spinning all the time and high side and low side pressures were the same. So it wasn't actually pumping any volume of Freon. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna take this apart and see if we can't find the root cause of the failure. Okay, the first step is gonna be to remove this clutch from the front, so let's do that. So we're going to remove the bolt and pull the clutch off the front, like so. Now the clutch is removed, we need to remove the bearing piece. There's a snap ring in here that holds that in. Okay, so there's the snap ring off. Okay, so once the snap ring is removed, you can then pull this bearing housing assembly off. That comes out. Now we can see the shaft on the end. There's another snap ring in here. We're gonna pull that off and that's gonna let this clutch off the front of the compressor case. So let's get that snap ring out of the way. Okay, so snap ring comes out and then this guy comes off the front. So that's your compressor clutch. So this is the core compressor with the clutch removed. So to remove the clutch, one bolt, couple of snap rings, and a little bit of coaxing with a hammer. Not too bad to get it apart. So next we're going to take these bolts off the top here and see what we can see. I have personally never taken one of these apart, so we're going to see what it looks like and how it works and see if we can't identify the root cause of failure that caused this part to go bad. This is a very expensive component to replace and it's mostly because the part's expensive. So I wanna see if we can figure out what went wrong and maybe see if there's something that could have been done to prevent that from happening. So let's dive right in. Okay, so those were a lot tighter than I thought they would be. As you can see, we're starting to see some oil come out. So we're gonna go ahead and spin those the rest of the way out and split this compressor case and see what we see. Okay, now that all the bolts are out, this housing should split. There we go. We're just gonna pull straight up on it. And there's the inside of the compressor. Okay guys, so this is the inside of an AC compressor out of a 2014 Chevy pickup. So what we're seeing here is the front case removed. What you can't super see very well here is that this swash plate is adjustable by the solenoid on the back and then as it turns, it's gonna move each one of these individual pistons up and down. Now the bearing on top is the thrust bearing because obviously as it's pushing the piston back down and there's fluid pressure on it, it's gonna to wanna to push that shaft up so the housing case rides on that bearing that keeps it from pushing out the front of the case. So this compressor stopped working and we are trying to figure out what originally went wrong. But that's kind of the inside of how one of these things works, which I just thought that was super cool because I've never taken one of these apart. So let's keep taking them apart and see if we can find a failure point here. Okay, we gotta lift it out of the bore. So there's the back half of the case. We are making a tremendous mess here. This is the back of the compressor case, and you can't really see it, but there's a large, large hole here and a small one there. So this is gonna be your suction side. So basically, Freon's coming in and kind of going around this whole portion here, and that's where your low side is. So it's pulling from this cavity and pushing out that cavity. The way it works is there are two valves per cylinder bore here. So this one here is the inlet, and so as it sucks in, it pulls that little flap up, pulling Freon into the cylinder bore, and then it pushes it out through that flap, which comes out right in here. So inlet, outlet, and then as the swash plate is rotated, if you watch right in here, you'll see that the cylinders move 
up and down with the rotation of the swash plate. So this is a variable displacement compressor, which means that using this solenoid here on the back, it can vary the pressure that is going to the swash plate, thus changing its angle. So if this swash plate was pushed, you know, more like that, the, the farther that this swash plate pushes, the steeper that angle is, the more it's going to pull the bottom pistons out and the farther it's going to push these ones in. So the steep angle like that is more compression and then more of a flat angle is for less compression. So when you're cruising down the highway, it's able to put it into a less volume attitude like this right here, which means that you're not using a ton of energy off of your engine to maintain your AC when your engine's turning at a high speed. So really good design here. And I don't really see a failure point. Everything in here appears to be working just fine. So the valving in the gasket or this back plate assembly all looks good. I don't see any gasket leaks or anything going on with any of these valves. I don't see any issue in here. It's possible that our solenoid went bad, which basically held this plate at an almost flat attitude and didn't cause any kind of you know pitch change so based on everything I'm seeing here there's no catastrophic failure point and again this compressor was spinning with less than 5 psi difference between high side and low side so my guess is that what had happened was a mechanical failure of this electrical solenoid so basically that solenoid is going to vary pressure on between its inlet and then this outlet portion which goes up the shaft and pushes on this so i think what happened was this piece failed which put this swash plate into a straight attitude or very close to straight something like that where it's not moving the pistons very much and that caused the failure here so we replaced this compressor as a whole and this is just a core that i wanted to take apart to show you guys how it worked and that's the gist of how this works all right, you guys, so there you have it. That's how one of these compressors comes apart and kind of how it works and what went wrong with this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Give this video a like if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you guys in the next video.